Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Karen Wynn joining me today. Hi Karen. Hi Jackie, thank you so much for having me. Karen received her MFA from Fairleigh Dickinson University. She also holds a doctoral degree in nursing. Born and raised in New Jersey, Karen now lives in Boston with her husband and two children. And Our Little World, which we can see in the back there, um, is her first novel. So thanks, Karen, for joining us. Just wondering if you want to start off by telling us a bit about Our Little World. Absolutely. Um, so my debut novel is Our Little World. It is set in the 1980s in a small, idyllic, New Jersey town, and it centers on two sisters, B and Audrina, whose relationship fractures when a neighborhood girl goes missing. So it's a story about sisterhood, um, a coming of age story with a looming mystery. And it's also a story about the reverberations of tragedy in this small community. And could you tell us what the first idea was that you had for this book? Sure. Um, oops, I hope I can make that. Okay. okay, it comes crashing down. <laughs> um, so the first idea I had, so so the town of Hammond, the fictional town of Hammond, is um, based on the small town in New Jersey where I grew up, Mendham, okay. New Jersey. It's also yeah. an anagram of Mendham. And the I I wanted to tell a story about. I had a really great childhood growing up and I was really interested in essentially putting a tragedy in my childhood mm. and seeing what happens. Mm. So the starting point for the novel came from an incident that occurred in my own childhood. When I was younger, I used to love to go swimming at the local lake. And one day I was there and I was swimming underwater and I came up for air and I saw everybody exiting the lake. So I followed, I didn't know why. The lifeguard must have blown the whistle, but I didn't hear it mm. and was trying to find my mom on the beach. And then I saw her and there was this lifeguard, this frantic lifeguard in front of her. And he was just grabbing these little girls that were running by and saying, is this her? Is this her? And I realized then that my mom couldn't find me. So oh, she had told the lifeguard wow. that they had cleared the lake for me. Yeah, and It was, um, one of those moments in your childhood that just becomes seared within your, within mm. you, within your memory, a very visceral memory. Mm. And it was, it just seemed to me to be a great starting point for a novel. What if I or someone else like Sally Baker had gone missing that day? So that was the inciting incident, if you will, for my novel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? I must have been. I was, so my my protagonist B mm. is twelve years old, uh, but the story is told from an older when she thirty years later, and she's telling the story as a retrospective adult narrator. And there's a reason why she's telling it now. I must have been maybe a couple of years younger than she was, oh, okay. so maybe yeah. nine or ten at the time. Yeah, it must Although have made a huge um, back then, so. mm. <laughs> Must have made a big impact. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I, I remember my mother's, the look on my mother's face. Mm. Um, and it's funny because now she, she teased me recently. She said, well, would you think you would have a novel? If I hadn't had <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, I would yeah. just found another way to make Sally Baker disappear. Yeah. But it wouldn't have the same novel, that's for sure. And what made you um, want to write this story? So I wanted to tell a story about sisters and secrets mm. and how seemingly small in the moment decisions can have lingering and cumulative consequences. Um, so there's a lot of things that are occurring in my novel. Um, I don't want to give away spoilers, no. but um, there are a lot of things occurring from this neighborhood girl that goes missing and how that brings to the surface um, some secrets mm. and people act in various manners and um, some things get brought to light. And so I was just really interested in, in kind of digging deep and seeing what I could unearth mm. in these in this family, in the sisters, in the family, in the neighborhood, in the town. Mm. 
And had you always thought you were going to be an author? I hoped so. Yeah. I've always written um, from the time I was young. I think in second or third grade, mm. I wrote a book of poetry on my typewriter, my parents' typewriter, and I had, I dedicated it to them. I think my cat as well. I had oh, a table okay. of content. <laughs> and, um, and I illustrated it. And needless oh, to well, say, I don't, yeah. I don't write poetry. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, so I've always loved writing. I've always taken writing classes. Um, I'm also, I've had a whole other career as a nurse and a nurse mm. practitioner. Um, but I've really harbored these two loves as long as I can remember writing and medicine or nursing and, and in an interesting way I feel like they do go hand in hand mm. um I think that as a nurse you view your your patients in this very holistic manner and as a an author or writer it's helped and it, it's helped me to view my my characters in this holistic manner and really mm. think about them and get to know them um and yeah, it's interesting. I find a lot of closet creatives actually in medicine. Um, mm. So yeah, but I've taken writing classes forever. I've been in a local writing group since 2009. Um, so really, I've, I've, I've always loved writing. So this has always been a dream of mine. Yeah, yeah. So when you reached the point where you decided you were going to write this, how um, yeah. hard or easy was it to get published? It's always a journey, you know, yeah. I think that any writer, there's always a story, right? Mm. Um, it's, it's, you know, if I've had this dream forever, and if you had told me in my 20s that it would be another 20 years before I, for, before I published a book, I would have been like, really? Mm. <laughs> but, you know, it takes a while. Um, for me, you know, I did have another career. I'm a mom to two kids. Um, so it wasn't something that I was pursuing full time. Um, but I was honing my craft for a really long time. I did a low residency MFA um, while I was nursing. And I, um, as I said, I was in this local writing group. I've taken numerous writing classes. I also was, tr I think I was trying to figure out what type of writing I wanted to do as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I've written a number of short stories, have had numerous rejections. I mean, numerous for short stories and essays that I've written. Um, and at some point this, these characters were, were living in my mind and I, interestingly enough, I was doing great in terms of my nursing career and I could see the trajectory with that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if I don't do this now, when am I going to do it? Yeah. Um, so it was, it was good. It was, mm -hmm. it was this realization that I, I needed to bring these characters to life. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us a bit about what sort of research you did for Our Little World? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, Our Little World is set in the 80s. So I did a lot of 80s research. So that included everything from fun research, pop culture, from 80s movies and songs, um, to sayings, to house decor at the time. I was telling re someone recently about this. I was looking, I Googled house renovation projects okay. and I would look at the before pictures <laughs> instead of the after because yeah. people were trying to get rid of their 80s uh, themed yeah. uh, influenced homes. Um, I, um, I also researched some uh, more heavy topics of the 80s. Um, mm. I don't want to give away spoilers again, but there's a couple of medical conditions that crop up in my book. Mm. Um, so I needed to, um, I combed through some medical journals for that. Um, um, and I relied on my own nursing experience as well, mm. because I wanted to make sure I depicted them accurately and medically accurately because um, times have changed in the last yeah. you know, years. Mm. Um, and um, I also researched missing kids of the 80s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here in the U.S., it was a really interesting time. Um, there was there were these high profile missing kids who had gone missing and there was a stranger danger sweeping the nation. We had missing kids that were appearing on our milk cartons and that's how they got out the message about mm -hmm. missing kids. Um, so you would be having your breakfast cereal and you would see it, you know, it was a little jarring to see these these kids um, staring back at you. 
Um, and it was just an interesting time. There was newly enacted legislation mm. and efforts to um, help people locate missing kids, including a new national, relatively new national registry to even rec to even report when you had a kid go missing. But mm. prior to 1982, that didn't even exist. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so mm. there was just an unknown number of missing kids. Mm. And so my novel starts in 1985. So this was all very new. The local police weren't quite sure how to act. Usually the searches for missing kids were really driven by the parents of the mm. missing kid. Um, and the FBI at that point were rarely getting involved. So it was just, it was a really interesting time to set this novel in terms of that aspect. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. It, yeah, I'm sure you found a lot of really interesting things when you were doing all that research. Is there Absolutely. something that may not be, may not have made your book or anything, but um, that you found that was really interesting or really surprising when you did your research? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, I'm sure there is. Um, of course, I can't think of it right now. Mm -hmm. um, there were some things that um, we did have to correct like during the copy editing phases, mm. which were interesting. For instance, um, the word scrunchy, I thought was very 80s and I, I used it, but a, my very um, meticulous and um, excellent copy editor had realized that the word scrunchy, I guess, didn't appear in the vernacular really until like 1989 or something like that. So. Okay. Um, Mm. That was interesting. Mm. And then there's um, Home De I had mentioned a Home Depot at one point in the book. And apparently, and at, at this point, it was 1987. Apparently, in 1987, in New Jersey, there were no Home Depots. Oh, okay. Fast forward, there were yeah. Home Depots <laughs> in the US, mm. but not in New Jersey. Yeah. Fast forward years later, there were. So it's just interesting. Um, the combined effort to make sure that this book, even though fiction yeah. was really is that accurate? Mm, mm, yeah, no, that is really interesting. Um, and could you tell us what you like reading yourself and maybe if there has been something great you've read lately, you could share Yeah, with us? absolutely. Um, so um, let's see, I just finished a arc of a book called Groupies by a, another debut novelist, mm. uh, Sarah Prisness, which I really recommend. It's, it's a book, um, about um, a girl who moves to the West Coast, her 20 something year old girl in the 1970s and becomes a, a, a groupie of a rock band. And um, I highly recommend that. That's coming out um, this summer, groupies. The group, um, I also um, can recommend this book here, Gold Mountain by mm. Betty G. Yee. Um, so Betty and I have been in a, Betty is a member of my local writing group um, since 2009 mm. and we both have debut novels coming out within months of one another so that's just really fun and exciting um so this novel is an excellent uh young adult historical fiction novel that follows a chinese girl who comes to, to the u.s uh in the late 1800s to work on the transcontinental um railroad mm -hmm. and he um has assumed her dead brother's identity who oh, died from wow. blue mm -hmm. uh, and she's doing this because she needs money to send back to china to free her politically imprisoned father mm -hmm. so fabulous book mm -hmm. um also um homer away by kathleen west i recently read oops there we go um which is a great book about competitive youth sports um hockey in particular oh, um, here mm. in the u.s and it's interesting because this is one of the first books i've read um that has dealt with the pandemic um um you know that we're starting to see books now post pandemic mm. and i just thought she did a great job of weaving in um the pandemic as sort of something part of your past but also you know present and um she just did a seamless job with that but that's not what the book is about the book is about um Fam, uh, family relationships and um, it's an excellent book and I'm just starting um, The Sea of Tranquility by my favorite author Emily St. John Mandel um, so I, I can't wait to get back to that. No thanks for those recommendations we love getting recommendations and it looks like some great ones there. What about what are you doing now are you writing a new book at the moment or? 
Um, so I am writing a new book, which is really exciting. Um, it is set in, so I'm in Boston, um, and it's set in present day Boston. So I will also be weaving that sort of pandemic um, alongside my book. But um, it is about a group of women friends mm. um, and similar to our little world, there are going to be uh, complex relationships that unravel and secrets that emerge and a tragedy that sets everything in motion. Sounds interesting. And how far along are you with that? Um, not as far along as I want to be. <laughs> I will be getting back to it um, the, this, the, with the launch. Um, it's been very a very busy time. Mm -hmm. I had to kind of switch to this mode of, you know, talking about my book and, mm -hmm. and doing publicity stuff. But I, what's great is that I've been, even though I haven't been working on it, I have been thinking about it a lot in my mind, kind of turning there, which is what I used to do with Our mm -hmm. Little World. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, every day, actually, things are brewing and um, I'm getting really excited about it and itching to get back to it. And I'm, I keep looking at my calendar and thinking, okay, when am, when am I going to set myself on that great writing schedule again? Yeah, so. yeah. And talking about that, do you have a writing routine? Yeah, when I am in, a, when I'm in it, mm -hmm. I'm in it. So I will be, uh, I'm, a morning, I'm a morning person. Mm -hmm. So um, I will definitely, I will get up even at the crack of dawn or earlier, really, um, and work on my book. Um, and then I will, you know, take the kids to school and then I will return and continue to work on it. Um, so, um, yes, I like to, and then, you know, I have, I still do some healthcare consulting. So I try to organize my days around like my writing days and then my other days. Yeah. Um, mm. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And what, but when I'm really, oh, in, when I'm really in, into mm -hmm. it, I'm I'm sneaking away and at, at any point really to to write. Yeah, yeah. And what do you like doing when you're not writing? Um, I like reading. Um, I love um, you know I love hanging out with my family. Mm -hmm. We have a um. A, uh, a Bernadoodle, an 85 pound dog that we got oh, pandemic. Wow. So we what got. is that a uh, St. Bernard crossed with a poodle? Or? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He's, he's asleep right at my side. He's not <laughs> right now, unfortunately, but mm. um, he is a cutie. Um, yeah, so I, I like imagine. Hanging him for walks and hanging out with him. And I'm definitely his person. Mm. He follows me around everywhere. Mm. Um, you know, I, I love my family. I love travel. Obviously, haven't had a chance to do that much recently, but um, we are going to Italy next month. Um, so I couldn't be more excited oh, for yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. and um, what do you think makes a good story? I think a good story has compelling characters that you are especially the main character, um, you really need to be stuck into his, their, their life, his or her, their life, mm -hmm. um, and connect with that main character. And then I think that the main character has to undergo some change um, and they, they have to have some desire that they want that's, that's driving them along. And you have to decide whether or not you as the author are going to give it to them and what what can you kind of throw their way mm -hmm. um so i think compelling characters and interest in interesting plot and i always love a good um plot twist as well and i also i love i love beautiful writing yeah which is why i love yeah. st john Manuel. I, I love beautiful prose mm. And when you're writing, do you have a favorite place to write and any like favorite snacks or drinks when you're writing? Um, I do. I, I write right here, actually, mm. um, in, in my desk in my office, which is which is great. And I pretend that I don't live in Boston in the cold winter months with my uh, tropical wallpaper. <laughs> um, but I, I also belong to a group called, an uh, organization called the Writer's Room of Boston. Mm. Um, it's a shared communal office space. Um, and I love going there. And, and often, so I walk there, it's in the middle of Boston. And what's great is that there's a uh, Starbucks across the street. And I like to go to the Starbucks first and take care of a business and, and you mm. know emails I need to send and whatnot. So that when I enter the Writer's Room, I 
can truly focus on my writing um, and that that's kind of my sacred space. Mm -hmm. And I will say that um, it is, I find it helpful to go places to write mm -hmm. um, and to have that, you know, I've been obviously with the pandemic and stuff, I, I was that's more great. here. Yeah. Um, and it's great that I had a, a, a space to go to at mm -hmm. my place. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but honestly, um, as I mentioned before, when I'm also on a, working on something in the thick of it, I'm writing everywhere. Mm. I'm writing at my daughter's gymnastics class while mm. she's tapping on the glass window and trying mm. to get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing, um, you know, at, at my son's baseball game, and then he's like, "Mom, you're not looking." You know? <laughs> so, um, did you see that home run or, or not? But yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, of course." Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm, I'm, you know, I, 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 I am writing all the time mm. what do your children think of you having our little world published oh they think it's awesome yeah. you know we've definitely celebrated it um um you know i sold the book during the pandemic mm. so we kind of did a quiet celebration at home mm. um but they were just really happy for me and um my six-year-old daughter i think is like my biggest fan yeah. i think she she told that her teacher and, and everybody, I think she's selling my book at school. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, my son's really proud. And it was mm. so great to be able to have a launch event here in Boston mm. and, um, and to have my, my whole family there, my husband and, and my uh, two kids. Mm. And, um, and when it came to the Q and A part, my, my son asked a couple of questions on his own volition oh, and it was just, really? it was so cute. Awesome. And yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's it's been really um, great for them to see that. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got a few people watching. So just reminding the people watching, if you've got any questions for Karen, please type them in comments and I can read them out. Um, Kelly wonders if there's an author that inspired you most to become an author. You know, I, I don't want to say there's one particular author. Mm -hmm. I, um, I have been inspired by so many authors. Um, I mean, um, from the time I was a child and reading Raoul Dahl to uh, in my 20s, like I loved Hemingway and I, I, I um, found a lot of comfort in Hemingway's words. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when my father actually was on hospice, I went to the local bookstore and, and, and bought a book, a Hemingway book, and I was reading it at his bedside to, my, mm. to myself. And I just, I just always found comfort in, in books and inspiration. And um, so there's been so many authors and poets too, even though I, I, I will never write another book of poetry on mm. a typewriter or otherwise. <laughs> um, I, there's just, there's so many writers and even, and, and I, I get invigorated and, um, and inspired all the time by current books that I'm reading as well. And, and fellow debut authors, um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. The world of books. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Joe says you talked about that you're a morning person. So that's when you set aside time to write. Um, what yeah. happens when you're not into it? Do you stay and keep trying to write or do you just go off and do something else and then come back to writing? Um, you mean when I when I can't do that, when I have other things going on in the morning? Or when you feel like you're not into writing, I think she means oh. as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, everyone, or I, I'm not immune to writer's block, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that you need to honor that. And um, I find that sometimes... Um, sometimes I need to take a step away from my computer mm -hmm. and I need to go out and, and, you know, take a walk or live mm -hmm. life. And then invariably something that I see will, um, will lead to an idea, another idea, or I'll, like in the back of my mind, as I said, even in the past couple of weeks, um, I've been thinking about my new novel and even though I haven't been writing, I've been thinking about yeah. it. And so I think all of those, and sometimes I'll do notes to myself. I actually have a jar up here. It's like a note jar. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'll oftentimes like physically just drop notes in there. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, I think you have to honor that, but I also think that, um, I think that motivation begets motivation. And I think that if you continue just to, to do the, 
practice of writing and sitting down at some point, you know, something's going to come of it. And mm. it, it may be, you know, not great at first. Um, and that's okay. I mean, I, I wrote countless, countless drafts of our little world, mm. countless. I remember, um, a, um, at one point, so Sally Baker, and you know this from the beginning, so I'm not giving anything away, but both Sally Baker and, and the sister actually die. And I, you learn that in the first two mm. pages, but mm. at one point, my main character B is, um, a bit of an awkward feeling like an outsider, um, character and she I had her imagining that she was talking to Sally Baker the, the missing Sally Baker and I had a writing teacher say to me Sally Baker like who cares about Sally Baker she's she's dead <laughs> you know she can't grow as a character mm. and what I'm really interested in is what is going on in this family and and this neighborhood mm. and this town and mm. that helped me to refocus um so, yeah, so I think that, you know, you just keep, you, you just, you, and I, but I had to write that first yeah, uh, to, get... to know that and mm. to learn that and to mm. realize like what I needed to focus on in, in this book. Mm. Mm. And for your first book, your debut novel, um, what have you found so far has been your favorite part of the publishing journey? Um, hands down, my favorite part is hearing from readers who have connected with my novel. Yeah. That's mm. everything. To me. Mm. Mm. And what about the least favorite part? <laughs> hearing from readers that don't connect. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think, um, the most least favorite part. Um, I think just, you know, making yourself vulnerable to mm. it all, um, has, it's been a little terrifying. Mm. Um, and, um, and, you know, every time, quite honestly, every time I do an interview, um, a reading, um, I, I, you know, I leave it and I feel a little, um, maybe self-conscious afterwards in the aftermath. Yeah. Mm. And, um, you know, cause I feel exposed and vulnerable. Did I, mm. did I cover, did I say all things I wanted to mm. say? Did I say them eloquently enough? Right. Um, and then the next morning I usually wake up and I say, you know what? I did the best I could yeah. and I just have to move forward. And I'm trying to live in the moment like that, because if I start to second guess myself, you know, you can go down a rabbit's hole. Mm. So. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. It's been great talking to you and um, really recommend people go out and look for Our Little World. I've read it myself and really liked it. Um, yeah, lots of twists and mysteries in it, which was great. Thank you so much. I so appreciated um, being here and speaking with you, Jackie. Do you want to let people know how they can keep in touch with you? Yes, absolutely. So um, you can find me um, on my website at Karen L. Wynn, w -I -N -N, Oops, dot com. Yeah, that was going to happen. <laughs> um, but I, I um, you, the place I'm most active is Instagram. Um, mm. And on social media platforms, I'm at K Book Writer, K Book Writer. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at K Book Writer. Well, thanks so much. And thanks also to the people who joined in with some questions. It's been great. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.